Hi, Lara. How have you been? It's been a while since we last saw each other, right? Patricia, why are you texting me all of a sudden? Is something happening between you and my brother? Oh no, our relationship is still going strong. But something has happened to me and I need your help. Help? What's going on? Well, did I hear correctly that you just bought a two-bedroom apartment? And since you're living alone, I was wondering if you could let me stay in the other empty room. You see, I recently got kicked out of my previous place because my old roommates spoke ill of me to the landlord. Ugh, they were truly terrible people. What? They spoke ill of you? What exactly happened? It's all drama among girls, you know. They were jealous of my looks, my stable job, and my loving boyfriend. So they conspired to steal my things, and even tried to seduce Jeremy when I wasn't around. Oh my god! How did Jeremy react to all of this? You know how much Jeremy loves me. He didn't betray me and informed me about their intentions. I was furious and confronted them, which led them to badmouth me to the landlord, accusing me of being a thief, never cleaning the room, and threatening to move out if I didn't leave. So, the landlord had no choice but to kick me out. Wow, from what you're saying, they sound like truly awful people. But have you considered finding a place on your own? Oh, I don't want to be alone. I feel so lonely. Wouldn't it be great to have someone to stay with, someone to take care of and support each other? And coincidentally, that person is also my boyfriend's sister. So, when can I move in? Is this afternoon okay? Hold on a second. I, I never said I agreed to let you move in. Yes, I did buy a two-bedroom apartment, but I already made plans to have my best friend move in with me. She's studying abroad and will be back in about six months, and during that time I also need some private space. So I think you should find another place. Oh, come on. There are still six months to go. Can't you help me out just this once? I really have nowhere else to go. Don't you want to know more about me, your future sister-in-law? Do you really need that much private space? Just stay in your own bedroom and close the door. I promise I'll never set foot in your room. I understand, but I don't feel entirely comfortable with the idea. We're not even that close, are we? Besides, you've only been dating my brother for two months. Isn't it too early to talk about marriage? I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but almost everyone has had their fair share of relationships. Well, actually, it was Jeremy who expressed his desire to see you and me get along better. Don't you want to see your brother happy when he sees the two important women in his life getting along well and supporting each other? Patricia, I find it hard to believe that Jeremy specifically asked you to reach out to me and request to stay in my apartment. Are you sure that's what he said? Well, he did mention that it would be great if we could get along better. I may have exaggerated it a bit, but he definitely wants us to have a good friendship. Patricia, even though I understand that you're going through a difficult time, I still believe it's best for both of us to maintain our own living spaces. Living together may create unnecessary friction and strain our relationship further. I think it's important to prioritize harmony and avoid any potential conflicts that could affect Jeremy and your relationship. So you're saying you don't want me around because you don't like me and don't support my relationship with Jeremy? <sighs> no, Patricia, that's not what I meant. Please don't jump to conclusions. I simply think it's better for us to have our own separate living arrangements. It's nothing about disliking you. It's about respecting each other's personal space. But you specifically said you don't want to live with someone you don't know. It feels like you're ignoring me and treating me as if I don't exist. I said someone I don't know well, Patricia. Not someone I don't like. <laughs> Please don't twist my words. Can you stop this nonsense? We haven't moved in together yet, but I've already seen that we're not compatible. I think you should go find another place to live. Oh, wait a minute. There's a call from Jeremy. <laughs> okay. Patricia, ugh, I didn't expect you to take this step. You told Jeremy I don't respect you? Are you saying that if I don't let you in, you'll break up with Jeremy? Don't you feel that's too compulsive? I'm just being honest with Jeremy about how I feel. I'm not trying to force anyone's hand, but giving Jeremy a choice. So, when can I move into your house? You... <sighs> Fine. I'll let you move in because my brother asked for it. 
But remember, when my friend returns, you'll have to find another place immediately. All right, whatever you say. Can I move in this afternoon? Before you move in, there are a few things we need to clarify. Firstly, there will be a monthly rent of $500 for your room. Additionally, each person is responsible for personal belongings and food and grocery expenses because I prefer not to share them. We'll also split the daily household cleaning tasks evenly, and it's important to ask for permission before using anyone else's belongings. Huh. Why are there so many rules? What? You want me to pay rent? $500 per month? Why should I pay when it's your house? I can't provide accommodation for free, Patricia. Adding another person means increased electricity and water bills, right? It's only fair that we share those expenses rather than me shouldering them alone. Lara, I understand your concerns, but can't we find a compromise? I really don't have the means to pay the rent right now, but I promise I'll find a way to contribute in other ways. Maybe I can help with household chores or run errands for you. I just want a chance to prove that I can be a valuable addition to your home. In that case, fine. <sighs> I won't charge you for rent. However, it's important to maintain the other rules as well. They are in place to ensure a harmonious living environment for everyone in the house. Can we just let go of the other rules too? I, I really want us to have a good relationship. Lara, we can be more flexible, can't we? Look, Patricia, I get that we're connected through Jeremy, but living together requires some ground rules. It's not about being uptight. It's about respecting each other's boundaries. But do we really need all these rules? I mean, can't we just go with the flow and trust each other? Trust is important, I agree, but rules help avoid misunderstandings and keep things fair. Plus, they create a sense of order and stability. Okay, fine. I guess I can live with some rules. But let's not make it too strict, alright? Deal. We'll find a balance. Let's make sure we're considerate of each other and communicate openly when something bothers us. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. Can't wait to see how it goes. I'll move in right this afternoon. Hey, Patricia, did you use my laundry detergent again? Mm, no. Why do you think that? Are you sure? I'm, I'm certain I had some left and now it's gone. Hmm, maybe someone else used it. No one else lives here. Oh, I forgot about it. Well, I forgot to mention this earlier, but the other day you left the lid open and it spilled all over the floor. I cleaned it up for you, though. Oh, yeah? If that's true, isn't it surprising that you've never cleaned the house but helped me clean the floor? Didn't the last time you spilled milk on the table you ignored it and went up to your room? And we argued about it. Yeah, I remember. And I can see I was wrong, so I corrected it. I'm your brother's girlfriend, after all. Shouldn't I give you a bad impression, right? That's great to hear. So, could I use some of yours? I need to wash my uniform for tomorrow's meeting. Oh, I'm actually all out, too. Fine, I'll go to the store myself. Wait, you're already outside. Can you buy it for me? I'll pay you later. I want to help, but I'm going on a date with your brother. It would ruin our romantic evening if I had to make a detour to the grocery store just to get laundry detergent. But if you don't buy your own, how do you plan to do your laundry without detergent? Oh, that's a good question. I'll take my clothes to the laundromat later. Don't worry, I won't use yours. Whatever. Oh, it's time to take my cupcake out of the fridge. Hey, Pat. Did you eat one of my cupcakes? No, why would I do that? There's one missing, and there are crumbs where you were sitting just now. Okay, fine. I got hungry, but it's not my fault. Your brother picked me up late, and I couldn't resist. But I need all four cupcakes. I made them to take to my parents' house. Well, that's perfect. Your parents can have two, and you can have the third. Jeremy is here with me, so he won't need one. My sister's gonna be there, too. Well, how was I supposed to know that? Maybe you should have mentioned it before I ate your food. I don't know. Maybe by asking before deciding to eat my food. Wait! 
By the way, where are all my yogurt and cinnamon buns? And why is my orange juice box empty? I just bought them all last night. Yesterday, when I put my cupcakes into the fridge, they were still there. Oh, <laughs> it's possible that the rats got into the refrigerator and ate them. Our apartment is infested with rats these days, you know? Rats? Is that your feeble excuse? Do you really believe a rat can open the refrigerator door, eat yogurt, and dispose of the container neatly? <laughs> can it magically open an orange juice carton and then carefully close it back up? Maybe we have our rat mastermind in our midst, like Jeremy Mouse. Whoa, calm down. Fine, I ate them, all right. But you didn't bother to put your name on anything, so I assumed it was fair game. Last night I was starving, so I helped myself to some cinnamon rolls and orange juice. Don't blow it out of proportion. I left some juice for you. I got hungry. What else was I supposed to do? How about buying your own food like a responsible adult? I haven't received my payslip yet, so I'm short on cash. Besides, wouldn't I be rude to let you have my leftovers? You're so self-centered, Mara. Regardless of that, I'm going to be your sister-in-law. Isn't family supposed to share everything? You claim to have no money, yet your room is bursting with new clothes. Can't you put your shopping spree on hold for a day and buy some groceries instead? I don't mind sharing as roommates or family members, as long as there is some reciprocity. It's been three months since you moved in, and not once have you contributed to groceries. Buying clothes is my passion. Do you think it's fair to ask me to give up my passion for those mundane things you want? But why would I buy groceries when you always keep the fridge fully stocked? I bought those groceries for myself, not for you. We agreed from day one that we would each take care of our own food and essentials. And let's not forget, it's not even certain that you'll become my sister-in-law. I have no responsibility to accommodate you and treat you like family. If it weren't for my brother, I wouldn't have allowed you to move in. Now, I seriously doubt those stories you shared about your previous roommates bullying you. How dare you accuse me like that? I have never lied to anyone. Oh really? From what I just witnessed, that doesn't seem to be the case. I don't want to argue with you anymore. I'll go to the store and buy what I need. Fine! While you're out, could you at least get me more orange juice and detergent? And we're running low on toilet paper too. Sure, if you're willing to give me some money to cover the expenses. Ugh, forget it. I'll manage somehow. Just go get your stuff then. Pff, fine, if that's what you want. Listen, Patricia, I just bought a brand new laundry detergent and those items in the fridge. They're strictly off limits to you. I'm not playing around anymore. These are for my personal use only. If you dare to cross that line, I will not take any responsibility for what happens to you. No more orange juice or cinnamon buns for me. I get it. It's not a joke, Pat. If you want to be part of this household and share responsibilities, we can work things out. Otherwise, you need to start getting your own supplies. I said I understand, Lara. You don't have to worry and keep threatening me like this. Well, I do worry. I'm tired of your attitude. This is a shared space, and it's time you start respecting that. Fine, whatever. No, it's not whatever. I expect you to take this seriously. I'm leaving tonight to stay at my parents' house, and honestly, I'm relieved to get away from you. Oh, have a wonderful time. I'm sure I'll enjoy the peace and quiet. You know what? Your sarcastic remarks won't change a thing. But before I go, let me give you some final advice. Buy your own toilet paper. I won't be here to bail you out when you run out. Don't worry, I'll manage just fine without your advice. We'll see about that. Goodbye for now, Patricia. Oh my god, Lara! What the hell did you buy? Why are my clothes stained like this? I just bought them and I haven't even worn them yet. Ugh! Are you sure you bought the right 
laundry detergent? Oh, so what? You used my laundry detergent even though I warned you not to? Well, that's too bad because it's actually bleach. I mixed bleach with that new bottle of laundry detergent. What? Why would you do that? Why didn't you tell me? Are you intentionally trying to set me up? Do you have any idea how much damage you've caused? Don't blame others like that, okay? You assured me that you didn't use my laundry detergent. Why should I report to you about what I do with my own things? Besides, I already warned you not to use my groceries, didn't I? If it wasn't a setup, why would you pour bleach into the detergent? Don't talk like I'm a thief here. You're the one who damaged my new clothes, so you have to compensate me. I like the bottle of laundry detergent, so I poured bleach into it. Is there a law forbidding me from doing that? And don't try to force me to pay for your unreasonable demands because of your rudeness, lack of manners, and entitlement. I haven't even asked you for money for always using my laundry detergent, shampoo, shower gel, and food for free. Oh, so you want to start a war with me? Then don't blame me for eating all your cinnamon buns. And I'll drink the whole bottle of orange juice. You better not do that, Patricia. If you do, you'll regret it. <laughs> now you dare to threaten me? Let's see who comes out as the winner. I'm taking a bite of the cake, Lara. Oh, what the hell is this? Oh, why is it so spicy? And it tastes like... Like toothpaste? Yes! Oh, exactly! Oh, it's too spicy! My tongue feels like it's on fire! I had to drink half a bottle of orange juice to soothe it. What? Did you already drink half a bottle of orange juice? Then I'm pretty sure tonight won't be easy for you. Oh, what are you talking about? And how did you know? Oh, my stomach! Why is it so uncomfortable? Are you okay? No, my stomach is really acting up. It must be because of your cinnamon bun. Well, actually, it wasn't what you ate. It's what you drank. No, it couldn't have been the orange juice. I've drunk from this brand many times, but this is the first time. Ouch, it really hurts. I need to go to the restroom right now. Oh. <laughs> I guess you better hurry. You see, I knew the cinnamon buns tasted so spicy and like toothpaste because I added some special seasonings to them. A little bit of chili powder and the frosting on top wasn't just frosting. It was also toothpaste. You put toothpaste on the cinnamon buns? Are you insane? Why would you do that? I don't know, maybe to teach someone a lesson. It's not nice to always use someone's things without contributing, you know. And especially to lie to them about it. So you're saying you tampered with my juice too? Excuse me? <laughs> it's not your juice. I bought it. But yes, you're correct. If you just respected my boundaries and stayed away from it, as I asked, you wouldn't have consumed the laxative I added to it. Ugh, now you're just making this up to make me miserable. You intentionally lured me into drinking it by telling me about the food you bought? I'll talk about this with Jeremy, and he'll set you straight. Do you honestly think I would go to such lengths just to make you miserable? I clearly warned you not to touch my things. And by the way, did you forget to buy toilet paper as I suggested? Toilet paper? Oh no, we don't have any toilet paper here. I asked you to buy it. Why didn't you? What am I supposed to do now? Well, that's not my problem anymore. Remember, I won't be coming back today. Perhaps it's time for you to learn how to handle your own problems. This is unbelievable! You're heartless! I can't believe I ever trusted you! I'll make sure everyone knows the kind of person you truly are. Don't you think what you did is childish? Oh, come on. I'm just in my early 20s. Do you think that's old enough to tolerate such behavior? Even if I were in the 70s, I would still do this to you. Go ahead. Spread your version of the story. I have no doubt that people will see through your manipulations. I'm done being taken advantage of, Patricia. Consider this a wake-up call. 
Oh no, Patricia, you what? I've had enough of your entitlement and disrespect. I can no longer tolerate your behavior in my house. Pack your things and leave before I come back home tomorrow. What? You can't just kick me out like this. I have nowhere to go. I am your brother's girlfriend. That's not my concern anymore. This is my house, not his. You've shown no regard for my boundaries or the rules of this household. I will not have someone like you as my sister-in-law. Find another place to stay, but it won't be here. You can't do this. Jeremy won't be happy about it. He'll take my side. Let's see if he supports your actions when he learns the truth about how you've been using and deceiving me. I won't let you manipulate him into defending your unacceptable behavior. This is my decision, and you need to accept the consequences of your actions. Your relationship with Jeremy will no longer have anything to do with me, so don't think you can use my brother to control me any longer. When I finally returned home, the aftermath of Patricia's presence in the bathroom became apparent. I couldn't help but chuckle at the sight before me. Her favorite magazine, the one she often indulged in during her countless hours in the bathroom, lay there in tatters. Several pages were torn and scattered about, a comical reminder of the chaos she had brought into my life. Jeremy, upon learning the truth about Patricia's deceit and manipulation, decides to end their relationship. He realizes that trust and honesty are foundations of a healthy partnership, and Patricia's actions have shattered that trust beyond repair. Meanwhile, Patricia's old roommates, fed up with her lies and manipulations, decide to expose the truth about her on social media. They share their experiences, warning others about Patricia's toxic behavior. The posts gain traction, and Patricia finds herself unable to find any place to rent due to her tarnished reputation. Then, as fate would have it, my best friend, who had been studying abroad, finally returned. Her arrival brought a sense of relief and a glimmer of hope for restoring the harmony within my home. It was during this time that something unexpected happened. Jeremy, my brother, and Patricia's ex-boyfriend found himself drawn to my best friend. Their interactions grew more frequent, and it became evident that a special connection was forming between them. As I observed their blossoming relationship, I couldn't help but feel a sense of joy and relief. Finally, Jeremy had found someone who appreciated and reciprocated his affection genuinely. It was a stark contrast to the tumultuous dynamic he had experienced with Patricia.